Welcome to the Basketry Museum. We are doing a special virtual presentation this year because unfortunately you won't be able to come and see me. This year I was going to have a special exhibit for the 200th anniversary of the settlement of Lanark. But of course, because of our little problems, we won't be able to have visitors here and you won't be able to come and see my museum. So I thought rather than have nothing, it would be really fun to have a special COVID-19 exhibition. And it's going to be making baskets with five different materials that have invaded or are invasive in our area, a bit like COVID-19. So I hope you'll enjoy the museum and we're going to show you each piece which has been displayed upstairs. This is the first exhibit and I chose Phragmites as the first one because in 2008 it was the proclaimed the most invasive, our most invasive uh, plant material. It's called Phragmites and they grow in the ditches and beside the road and they have been taking over a lot of waste land and a lot of wetlands. I, I think they're tall plumes and you probably have seen them growing beside the road, big tall fluffy tops and they blow in the wind and they look beautiful and every year they die back. Now I made a little book for the an ex exhibition and the look, book is made with the stalks of the Phragmites and you can see here and it's been twined with cordage made from the Phragmites leaves and so the cordage was holding it together and inside the book there's paper pages and the pages have been made with paper that have been from the Phragmites leaves. Now the leaves contain silica and they have been used in the past for paper and so I have different paper and I wrote the paper there's a little bit of writing on there and it's sort of fun and when it was in the exhibition I also covered a little box with paper so that it actually lies in the box like this now it could be used for all sorts of things you could use the stakes for all sorts of things it resembles bamboo so of course you can't really bend it it's also used in England for thatching and there it's called Norfolk weed and it's wonderful for thatching and we did use it once up at the Mira schoolhouse we thatched the little hut so it's got uses and the more we can use it the less invasive it'll be maybe the second piece in the exhibition are pieces made by cattails and cattails I'm sure a lot of people know they live in the ditches they grow rurally and urban, in urban areas. They're not invasive much with us, but there are varieties called Typha catapolia that are very invasive in the United States with a narrow leaf. But ours do take over certain areas. They've been used an enormous lot by the indigenous people and they've made all sorts of things. Here we have two little dolls that were made. made. Of course, the indigenous dolls don't have faces and the little ducks that float down the river, these are all made by cattails. The indigenous people used it a lot for making screens and making carpeting. Um, we use it more twisted and made into a rather more of a cordage and we use it for making chair seats. And it's very useful, it's very substantial and of course the cattails grow every year and die back every year so we're, we're using a renewable resource. Cattails are very confusing because people in this country call them bulrushes. And I always have a little trick to encourage people to call them cattails because cattails have hot dogs on top, on the stalk, which grow fluffy and blow away in the fall. And so if you think of cats and dogs, you remember that's a cattail. Rushes are grow also in water, but they have little florets and they're completely run in the stalk. Cattails have wide flat leaves and they can be, they, the roots can be eaten and you can eat the shoots. And they're a wonderful, useful plant, particularly used by our indigenous people. So I have called them invasive. They are a bit invasive, but they're also very friendly. And red-winged blackbirds love to nest in the, in the, in the tops of the cattails. Now we have a lot of grapevine in this area. It is native to this country and it, in some areas it really, really consumes 
the trees, it grows over the trees, breaks them down, and it's a real, real problem in many areas. It's wonderful for basket making. It grows up long, it's very, very prolific, and at the bottom of the stalks they're very thick and big, and it grows up to the top of the trees. Now, we can use any part of it, but usually we like the long, narrow bits, which I'm going to show you in a minute. The, the ba this basket here is, is um, made with what we call random technique, which means it doesn't really have a technique at all. You make a lovely round ball and you just find your, just go wrap round and in and out and backwards and forwards. And when you've got a ball, you push the sides down and you find a handle and you wrap the handle round. They're really fun. You can make big balls and little balls with grapevine. And I actually once made one at a music festival and all the children came and sat in it. The other one I've made here, this is an interesting one because I was teaching in Brockville and I had a very sweet old man who came who had a farm which was covered in grapevine. Now he noticed that people were making grapevine wreaths in the market. So he started making them and then he thought, oh, why don't I make a basket? Well, he had absolutely no idea how to make a basket. And so he developed his own idea, which I thought was the most wonderful idea because I'd never thought of doing this before and I just thought I'd show you quickly how to do it. He would put a staple, he would thread three pieces of grapevine under the staple and then he would start weaving round. And really, it was such an amazing idea. I had never ever seen anybody do it. He was very sweet, he taught the whole class. And we all made one on a, on a Nell's idea. And I thought I'd just show you because it is such a wonderful idea. You put the three, three bits of grapevine underneath there. We actually would have had thicker grapevine, but I didn't have any thick stuff in my garden. So I couldn't do it, I'm afraid, to show you, but you can imagine these could be thicker. And you have three tucked in like that. And then you get the long bit and you start weaving round. He had never made a basket, of course, before. He didn't know you should have five weavers, odd weavers, and you could put another one in. And then he got the long bit and he just started weaving round and round. And he, he went weaving round and round and round until he'd made the bottom. And then he took it off the staple and he held it in his arms and just wove up the sides. And I just thought I would show you because this is such an amazing way to make a basket. And it was such an easy way. But when you have six, you have to go across two, one. You see how simple it is to weave? If you've never made a basket before, try weaving a basket like this. It's very, very easy. And of course, I keep weaving until my, my base would be out probably perhaps this size, and then I would take it off, take the staple out, hold it in my arm, weave round the edge, and tuck the ends in. Anyway, grapevine is wonderful. You're saving the environment, you go and pick it up. It can be used for sculptures, it can be used for anything for long weavers. And of course, you can also use grapevine from ordinary grapes people are growing. They take them and prune them every March, and you can collect them and use them. Wonderful supply, wonderful material for making baskets. Now we're going to talk about brambles, and I'm sure anybody who's used to walking in the woods in the country knows about brambles. There are a great many different types of brambles, but mostly they grow on great big long streaming vines, and of course they do have prickles. It's wonderful stories in the old days. People used to have bramble fences, to protect their property, people couldn't walk through prickles. Well, of course, if we're making them for baskets, we don't want the prickles. And so what we do is we get an old pair of blue jeans or an old cloth or something, um, actually tougher stuff's better. And I, I should say it's a good idea to wear gloves because they're very prickly. And when you're collecting them, it's a good idea to wear boots too, because they usually grow in very messy places and you need to real dressed up. Um, take the prickles, take the prickles off and just do this. Rub them, the prickles come off. And once you've got rid of the prickles and the, the leaves, you've got a lovely weaving piece that you're all ready to use. 
um, you can get some that are really long and some that are quite short. But I find that I go out and collect them, sit down just with my cloth, and I go, there we are. You should have something that has no prickles on it. You don't want to make a basket with anything prickly and thorny. So there we are, that's our, our perfect piece. So you'll go collecting a lot. To make the basket, I use the same technique as you would for the willow basket, with a central bottom here, and weave round. Now you'll notice this one's all golden, and they were all golden. In the next door basket, we're going to see a red one. I'm not quite sure of the difference, but of course these sometimes have all sorts of different types of berries. Brambles are wonderful for wildlife. They provide berries, they provide um, all sorts of different things for butterflies, various insects, so they're very friendly. They're also very unfriendly for us. You know, brambles mainly, they are fairly invasive in places like open, open areas in woods and along the edges of woods. And they can be pretty nasty if you have to walk through them. But they are very useful. And I think there are all sorts of uses you could find for these long things. You could use them for making garden fencing and twining. It's quite pliable. Actually, this one isn't quite as pliable because it's been sitting waiting for this. But you can see they are very pliable and they're all different sizes. So brambles are very good, but you do need to wear protective clothing when you go there. And of course you need gloves and you need a nice a bit of cloth to wipe off all the prickles. And then there you are, you've got a lovely material. The last one are Virginia creeper baskets. Virginia creeper is enormously invasive. If you know anything about Virginia creeper, you'll know that it covers up old tree stumps, it covers up rocks, it covers up all sorts of areas. It's extremely difficult to get rid of. It goes a lovely red colour in the, in the fall and it, the, the leaves are rather like a hand. There are five leaves and they grow. They're very, very long and they're very naughty when they get in the wrong place. I've got some Virginia creeper to show you and you can see it's got lots of little wiggly things on it and it can actually stick to buildings. It was used in some areas to cover up buildings to keep them cool in the summer. But they can also apparently get through cracks in walls and go into your house and do naughty things with your building. So you do have to be very cautious about using a Virginia creeper. Some people call it Victoria creeper too, apparently. Now, because it's so long and so pliable, you can see you can do wonderful things with it. It's really, really useful. I, I made two baskets for the exhibition. The first one I used um, rather like a random technique, and this is going to be a hanging basket, but I thought it would cover up the nasty coloured plastic. And I just, I just wove it round and round. I just, there was no technique, I just started and went in and out. I attached the top bits to the top, and I just wove it. And that's a fun thing to do. You could do that with big pots or little pots, or you could also actually make sculptures if you wanted to. The other one I made, this little one here, I made this more of a basket like a willow basket with a, with a separate base, at least a special base. And then I used the red brambles for a little bit of decoration. I think the red brambles, I think maybe, uh, escaped domestic ones because I found them around my house, but the ones in the actual woods were all they all had the yellow branches, so I think the red was something special. It's very invasive, it's very difficult to get rid of, but the roots are good too. Um, I have a bank which is covered, and underneath the ground, if I want to go and find some roots, many of which I use for the random one, you just dig under the ground and you can pull them up. And the roots are just as good as the top. So it's a very good basketry material, and it's a very naughty, invasive creeper if it gets in the wrong place. So it's a sort of nice basket material to use because you're cleaning it up as well as using it. Now this, these are all the baskets I've made and I'm sorry I couldn't think of anything to do with wild parsnip which is another very invasive plant we have here and of course poison ivy which we all have to live with and that's still growing along many of our roadways. I couldn't think of anything in the basket world to use poison ivy for, but maybe I'll think up 
something that we could use it for and go and collect it. But I think it's interesting to think of using materials that are a nuisance and that we're actually not damaging the environment. We're using something that is expendable and you can go out and collect and you don't have to go shopping. And it's a fun thing to be able to make something from nothing, as people say. Anyway, good luck. I do have a video on YouTube on how to pick and collect cattails if anyone's interested. Um, they, they could watch it. You can also use rushes too. Cattails are the ones I specialise with. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope perhaps you can come and see me next year when we'll be open again. <laughs>